This is WordPress Plugins A to Z. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be hiding out there on the globe today. This is another training video from WP Plugins A to Z.com and JohnOverall.com. This training video here is going to show you how to install, clean up, and get yourself set up with a very fresh install of WordPress, and then all the things you need to do to make your job a whole lot easier. So what we're looking at first is, of course, a blank website. Domain name is there, but there's nothing. Nothing's uploaded, nothing is set yet. So you're gonna need to do a few things first. What we have here is an outline document on what you're gonna go through and you're gonna basically check to make sure first off that you have cPanel and FTP login information all set up. You've got an FTP program and you've set that up and logged in. And inside the cPanel, you'll go into the MySQL wizard. We'll show you how that's done. The five minute install for WordPress. Once you log into it, a couple of tasks you need to do and then all of the settings that you will go through in there. So this is where we're gonna start. So just a moment. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to log into your FTP system. I use FileZilla and it is a great program, so you might consider it. What you'll want to do is you'll want to log into your site and you'll want to navigate to the public HTML directory. And you can see right now we have no files in here at all. So what we're going to do is you start the upload of all of the WordPress core files. You bring them over from a directory you already have, get them up started and start them uploading. And while those are uploading, you can then move on to the next task. And in the next task, what you're going to do is you're gonna log into your cPanel using the cPanel information for your domain name. And once you get into the cPanel, you're gonna go look for under the databases area, you're gonna go look for the MySQL database wizard. And then you're gonna click on this First, you're going to create a database name. Once you've typed in the name you want, hit next step. Now you're going to create a username for it. Okay, and then you can use the password generator to generate a random password for it. Copy that password, copy it from here right now while you're thinking about it and then you'll want to save it in a text document somewhere. Once you've saved it, create the user. Okay, then you want to assign all privileges to it. Okay, once you've got that done, it'll give you up the username and information and you'll want to copy this information here and save it because you will need that later also. Okay, and so once you've completed that, then you'll come back to the cPanel area, and there's really nothing else to do at the cPanel for this task here. By the time you finish that, all of your files for WordPress should have uploaded to the site. So next, next we will move on to that. So now you're back to your blank website, and with the files, with all the files uploaded, Hit refresh on that page, and you're presented with the uh, uh, install site. Now, there's one key thing here which is easily missed, and that is to make sure your WordPress installs as HTTPS, provided you've uh, hooked yourself up with a web hosting provider such as johnoverall.com, which provides free SSL certificates, as many of them do not. You have to pay for the SSL certificate, and that is a very important thing. So what you'll need to do is make sure you go up to the address bar up top, and in the address bar, you want to make sure you put the HTTPS and ensure that it shows up as a secured lock to start installing your site. This is a very key thing to do. Choose your language, whatever it's gonna be. Most people use English US, but you could use English Canadian or English multiples others. There's a couple in here. So South African, New Zealand, Australian, Canadian. Hey, enjoy. So we're gonna go with English US though, just for simplicity's sake. Brings you to the page where you need that database username you created the password, 
and the host information for your site, and you're going to create a table prefix. Okay, local host is usually what most of them are, so that default works well. But if you're in a hosting provider that likes to be unique, you may need to get that information from them. The password and username what you used before, and then the table prefix is whatever you want it to be. Once upon a time, they used to say change it, set it, you know, create it. Well, the thing is, it's really not that big a deal. Security-wise, it's almost insignificant to change it. You might change it if you plan on using one database with multiple WordPress installs and use different prefixes for each WordPress install. That's a good use for it or you could just customize it to the way you like it to be. So I'm going to enter all that information here and I'll be back in a moment. Now once you enter that information, you get this marvelous page that says you made it through and it can communicate with your database. Now you're ready to install. Then you click run the installation and boom. Now what you want to do is you want to choose a site title, a username, a password, it generates one for you, but you might want to choose your own or make something better. And then the email address you're going to use here. And then once you're done with that, you click Install WordPress. Now I'm going to go enter all that information, and I'll be back in a moment. Now once you've entered all that information and you've clicked uh, Install, it comes up and says, Thank you and enjoy. It tells you what your username is and your chosen password. And then you just click on Login to log into the website. And I'm going to log in. Okay, once you're logged in, you're presented with a whole bunch of stuff. If you've installed the latest version of WordPress, it's going to offer you the Gutenberg experience, which, well, uh, give it a couple of years before you use the Gutenberg experience, unless you're really experimental. First thing you'll want to do is install the classic editor. Get it out of the way. This prevents the website from automatically switching to Gutenberg when it's released in version 5. It gives you some stuff here to customize your site, change your theme completely, etc., etc. Well, we're going to ignore all that for the moment. And we're going to jump right down to Plugins, Install New. And before we do that, we're going to give you a bit of an explanation. One of the things that happens with WordPress is when you go in there, you'll see it installs a Kismet, Hello Dolly. It also puts in sample posts sample pages, etc., etc., a whole bunch of junk. The privacy policy is going to stick. You'll have to build that out later. And then we got settings. So first thing we need to do is clean up the mess. So this is where we're going to go in here, and we're going to install a new plugin. And you're going to search for a plugin called After or Tasks After Install. What you're looking for is WP Tasks After Install. This is a great plugin. It cleans up your WordPress site in an instant. Wipes out the Hello Dolly, the sample posts, uh, sets a whole bunch of default settings for you in one smooth click. Simply install it, activate it, and it's done. And it even deactivates itself right after it's done, too. So as soon as you end up on this page of deactivation, delete this plugin. You don't need it. All that should be left is the classic editor. And when you go into the posts, all gone, stuff's in the trash. We need to clear the trash, empty the trash bin. Categories are all set to default. Okay, uh, pages, privacy policies, all that's left. We do have a trash can, empty the trash can. Comments are all clean, nothing there. Users, only well, user should be you. Tools, you can see what tools are available. Categories and Tags Converter, Export Personal Data. This is the stuff you need for complying with the GDPR and the security set or the personal settings there. That there is set here in your privacy and it's already set to the privacy policy draft page. So you'll come back to that later after you've built out your website. If you've got questions, feel free to contact me. So what we need to do now, though, is we need to go through here and set up a couple of quick settings to make sure that all the settings are clean. You've got your main site title, and then you'll want to create a new site title, or should I say a tagline uh, for it. It puts just another WordPress site. You definitely want to delete that at the most. You might leave it blank, but you might have a sub-tagline for it. 
Okay, you create the tagline you want. Make sure your address is set to HTTPS. This is very important with a fresh site. This way you're not having to worry about converting stuff later. Set your email address. Membership. Leave it unchecked so that no one can register your site. Once you get a membership system or an e-store on here, that'll automatically take over that. Time zone. You'll want to set your time zone to whatever your local time zone is going to be. My case, Vancouver. Date format, month, day, year, or day, month, year, whatever you like, customize it. Time format, what day your uh, week starts on. Most people start on Sunday if you use the Gregorian calendar. If you don't, well, you could start if you're, if you're a typical Seventh-day Adventist, your week starts on Monday. Hey, it's all up to you. Save those changes. Go into the writing section. Default plus blog is category is blog. Default pulse format is standard. If you're going to post via email, this is something you can set up. I don't recommend it very well. It's not very effective. It's been around for years and I've tried it a few times. It still doesn't work very well. So all that's good. Go into the reading settings. How many blog pages does it show at the most? 10 syndication feeds, 10. You'll want to drop the syndication down to a summary so that they don't see the entire post in your RSS feeds. Search engine visibility. If you are building out a dev site, this is where you want to check this box because you don't want the search engines indexing your website while you're building it because a lot of things change. So you can keep the, ind the engines from indexing you and you'll want to fix that when you're done and you'll see a warning pop up for that once it's done. Discussion settings, these are kind of important too. You want to uncheck the box to notify any blogs linked from articles. You want to make sure the notifications from other blog, blogs and allowing people to post the comments on new articles. Okay, now this one here should be unchecked. If you're going to allow commenting, you'll want to check this box. If you're not planning on allowing commenting, leave it unchecked. In this site here, this site will allow commenting and some other settings. You'll want to make sure they fill out their name and email. You could force them to register and log in to comment. You can close comments on articles, and this is always a good thing to do. You might set it for maybe 30 days. After 30 days, comments automatically close on the articles, on old articles. It keeps people from, from doing that. Some people leave them open because... You, Never know, somebody may come into an article that's very old and still relevant, and they might leave a comment. Threaded nested comments, five levels deep. Break comments in the pages. If you get lots of comments on your site, you'll want to do this. If you don't, leave it alone. You can have the system email you whenever anyone posts a comment, and a comment is held for moderation. You can force all comments to be manually approved or not. You can have automated, if someone's been approved on your site previously, their comment can be automatically uh, approved. And this is kind of not so risky, but occasionally you'll have people that are trustworthy enough that once they've posted one good comment, the rest of their comments are going to be good. But sometimes a spammer might slip in and then all of a sudden they'll post a crap load of spam and really just ruin your day. Comment moder moderation. Hold the comment in the queue if it contains one or more link. They've got a default to two, but I set it one. The moment someone sticks a link in their comment, it needs to be held for moderation because this is a spammer's favorite thing to do is to create a comment, put a link in there, you approve it, and all of a sudden you're linking the spam. Blacklist. You can blacklist uh, words on your site. You can blank out the F word. Whatever words you feel are inappropriate to be used on your site, the moment they're used in a comment, that comment is automatically turfed to spam. Avatars. This is where you want to show the avatars. And I usually default to the Gravatar logo because a lot of people have them nowadays. If they don't have a Gravatar logo, this big G will appear where their image is supposed to be. That's all you got for that. Hit Save Changes on it. After those are saved, drop into the media. Now you can default, leave the default settings for your default media images. And these will vary once you get a theme in here because theme adds their exact stuff. Now you can crop thumbnails to exact dimensions or proportional. 
if you uncheck this, that means an image that is 150 by 160 in proportions, instead of being 150 by 150 squared, it'll be 150 by 160, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, if you want the thumbnail to always be square, you click that, and when it crops that image, it'll take it from almost the exact center of the image is what is what it'll do. It'll take the best proportions from the center of the image in a perfect square and, and chop them down. It does the same thing for uh, the medium size and large size are done in proportions. These are the max width in proportions that it will be. Either it's a max width 300 or a max width th uh, uh, height 300. So it will always max out at one or the other width, depending on what kind of images you're doing. Same with the large sizes. Now this is something some people don't do. Uh, they, you want your images and, and files that are uploaded to your website to be organized month and year. Some people uncheck this box, and therefore what it does is it dumps all the images into the uploads folder. And we'll show you that in just And where that's at is inside your WordPress files that you uploaded, inside the WP content folder, is an uploads directory. And if you don't start with the year and month, what happens is it will dump all the images into the uploads folder raw and it'll make this folder extremely huge and make it unwieldy and and make it so you cannot manage that folder very well once time goes on on your site so it's something you'll want to do is make sure that you organize them by month and year so we'll leave that double check it then there's the permalinks this is a final or not final we got one more after that and in the permalink setting just to double check sometimes it doesn't always do it but there's multiple ways to set your permalinks and your permalinks are the clean URLs for your website such as when we go visit the website itself but we don't have any posts or pages oh we do we had the privacy page when we go to the privacy page okay the, the URL at the end is trendychef.com slash privacy. That is the post name setting here. You could have it say archives dash, uh, slash privacy or month and year. Now these ones here, I'm not sure of their use, but they are not very clean and they're not very SEO friendly. So you'll want to make sure it's set to post name. And category base, you don't want to use this at all. This just makes a mess of things. So just leave that alone as it is. And then the final thing to check is your privacy policy. Now your privacy policy, you can edit that policy by jumping into the edit window and it'll take you to the privacy policy page. And this is what it creates as a default. You'll want to go through this, update it, customize it for your specific purposes for your website and what your privacy is going to be all set about. But that's pretty much it. We can pop back to the dashboard here and you can check out here. They've got some tutorials on how to write your first blog post if you haven't already done it. Add an about page, view your site, manage widgets and posts. So we're going to move on here to installing a few basic plugins which are critical to your website. First thing, get rid of this. And then we move into plugins. Okay, we've got the classic editor, we know about that. Okay, the first plugin you're going to install, because you got rid of the Kismet, which is basically a piece of crap, uh, you're going to want to install anti spam bee. Okay, this plugin here is your anti spam plugin. Works brilliantly, removes 98 to 99% of all spam without you even knowing it's existing. Simple to install, activate and then go set it up. Okay, first thing you'll want to do is uncheck trust approved commenters. Now actually leave that check. Once you've approved a commenter, chances are good they're not going to spam you. Do not just trust commenters with a Gravatar because anyone with an email can get a Gravatar. Consider the comment time. Now this one's a really good one. It looks to see how long it takes somebody between the time they enter a comment and the time they hit submit. If it takes less than a couple of seconds to do, it was a robot. And this slows down spam dramatically. If they got BBP, uh, BB code, bulletin board code in there, consider it spam. You can validate the IP address of commentators. 
and this validates the IP address against the spam database. Use regular expressions. I leave all those checked. Now one thing you can do is if you have a particular problem from particular countries, you can block commenters from particular countries and you can start entering the country codes in here. You can go here to get the ISO codes to see what they've uh, what the ISO codes are for all the countries out there in the world. And where's the list? Oh, list isn't here. You'll have to you'll have to run through their web page to find the list. I usually leave that unchecked unless I have a problem. If you want to have your site set for certain languages, maybe it's French or Spanish, and you only want the comments in those languages, you can choose that. Up here, you can default setting is mark the comments as spam, do not delete. Now you can do that if you like, but personally, I feel that if it's spam, it's spam. Let it disappear. Statistics, you can see your statistics. Check those two boxes there, generate statistics, and a spam counter on a dashboard. Do not check back, check trackbacks and pingbacks. You always want to check those if they show up. Comment form used outside of post. If you use the comment form outside of your post, which is some serious custom coding, you'll want to check that. Save those changes, and you're all done with that one. And then we move on to the next set of plugins. And before we move on to those, just a quick recap here. This document here will be available for download at johnoverall.com. Setting up a fresh install of WordPress, which explains it and has links to the plugins that I'm talking about here. And a list along with that document there will be this document here, which is a list of essential plugins for a WordPress install. And that's not quite the one I want, but I'll be right back. Okay, it is in this one here. Here's the list of essential plugins that I feel are necessary for a website. And while I'll install a few of them while I'm showing this to you, I'm only going to install a couple that are key at the very beginning. The rest of them you add later. So look for this document and download it at johnoverall.com. And it'll be a nice PDF file that you can uh, use. All right. Okay, so once you've got anti-spam be all configured up, go back, add a new plugin. What you're going to install now is WP Maintenance Mode. Okay. And this plugin here is this one here. Install this one. Activate it. And then go set the settings for it because you got to actually turn it on. Okay, bypass for search bots? No, especially if you're in development mode. You can exclude certain pages so people can log in. You can put a dashboard link on there. I usually don't, but if you want to make it easy, you can. Hit save those settings. Click on the design. Now I like to change all of this here to just simply under development. Okay, and I just like to get all this changed to under development. And I wipe that out so it's just blank. Save that setting there. And to see how it looks, looks go uh, look under another browser and then load up the page. So we'll show you that in a sec. Okay, this is what it looks like under development. Now, if you don't particularly care for the plain white, you can go upload an image to it when you go in here and choose a background image. Upload a background image. Upload your image. And then go get your image. Go find the image you want. Bring it over. Drag and drop it. <clears throat> Let it upload. Takes a moment or two for it to upload. Compress. Choose it as your background. Save the settings. Now when you go back to the thing here, hit the reload button. And voila! One fancy, fancy background image for you for its un while it's under development. Okay, and then pop back in here. That's all done. Now you can set up GDPR stuff. You can also set up a bots management here. You can also uh, set up to integrate with your email address, email collection, social networks, Google, Google Analytics, so you can see what kind of traffic your page is getting while you're dealing with it. And I could have sworn there was a spot in here to connect from... Uh, maybe not. They used to have it. At any rate, 
use this plugin. Been using it a long time. It's great, simple, easy, and can save you some grief. And that pretty much wraps it up for the install of WordPress and getting the basics set up. You'll notice when you go to your dashboard, the maintenance mode is active. Don't forget to deactivate it. And that search engines is discouraged. You'll notice these things here, so that'll help keep it on your mind. Now, a couple of key things here, if you're setting up for the first time and you don't know it, all of these things here are manageable by going to screen options and then turning things on and off. There's the welcome off. You can turn off the WordPress news if you don't read it. Um, turn off the quick draft if you never use it. Leave the anti-spam be. You might move it. All of these are draggable. You can drag them around, drag and drop. At a glance is a good one because as you build out your website, you start to see information here that's useful. And pretty much every page in WordPress has this screen options in the back end. And that screen options can save you a lot of time and grief. You can go set and change things. Every page has it to turn things on and off, including your posts and pages to turn on, on and off certain things on those pages. So it's something to look at for managing your system and paring it down to only the essentials that you use on a poster page. That pretty much wraps it up for us. And with that, you've got your basic website and you're ready to start installing your themes your additional plugins, your customizations, and spending the next anywhere from five to 95 hours tweaking out your website. So have fun with that. And if you're in need of any help or services, please go ahead and visit johnoverall.com where we help you with quality WordPress hosting. When you're tired of that standard WordPress hosting company that doesn't give you everything you need and creates grief for you, come visit us where you get all the resources you need. Emergency support. If something goes wrong while you're doing this, feel free to contact us. You can contact direct off our website or you can pick up the phone. Give us a call at 818-850-7729. Or if you need WordPress website maintenance or if you want some development, feel free to give us a call at johnoverall.com. Thank you very much for checking out this video and... Look for more training videos from WP Plugins A to Z and johnoverall.com. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. Bye.